The decision by the United States Army to accelerate development and testing of the M1E3 Abrams tank marks one of the most significant modernization shifts in American armored warfare since the Cold War. For decades, the Abrams has symbolized battlefield dominance, but the lessons of recent conflicts, particularly in Ukraine, have underscored the vulnerabilities of even the most advanced heavy armor when faced with modern precision-guided munitions, drones, and hybrid battlefield environments. By planning to field four prototypes in 2026, well ahead of the previously projected 2030 timeline, the Army is signaling both urgency and adaptability. This acceleration reflects not only the need to preserve technological superiority but also a recognition that the old acquisition model, which took decades to field meaningful upgrades, can no longer keep pace with rapidly evolving threats. At the heart of the M1E3 project is a dramatic rethinking of the Abrams legacy. Earlier variants, particularly the M1A2 SEPV3 and the cancelled SEPV4 line, were built on a philosophy of incremental upgrades layered onto a heavy and logistically demanding platform. The problem became apparent when the Army determined that further enhancements would only add weight without solving the fundamental issue of survivability against new generation threats. The war in Ukraine amplified this concern. Russian tanks, long assumed to be technologically inferior, demonstrated both the limits of traditional armor protection and the lethal effectiveness of cheap drones and modern anti-tank guided missiles. If the Abrams was to remain relevant into the 2040s and beyond, it could not simply be made heavier, it had to be made smarter, leaner, and more adaptable. The vision for the M1E3 is therefore not merely a tank with stronger armor but a complete paradigm shift. Modularity sits at the center of its design. The use of an open architecture, software-driven system allows rapid integration of new technologies without requiring extensive overhauls. This is essential in an age where innovation cycles are measured in months rather than decades. The tank will be equipped with advanced active protection systems that intercept incoming projectiles and drone-delivered munitions, moving beyond the add-on kits like the Israeli trophy system currently used on some Abrams. By embedding such technologies directly into the platform, the M1E3 promises both improved survivability and greater efficiency. Another transformative aspect lies in crew reduction and automation. By integrating an autoloader into the turret, the Army aims to reduce crew size from 4 to 3. This not only saves space and weight but also reflects a growing trend across global armored programs toward leveraging automation. While technically challenging, particularly given American reluctance in the past to adopt autoloaders, the payoff could be substantial in terms of operational flexibility. Artificial intelligence will play a key supporting role, not as a replacement for human decision-making but as an aid in threat detection, fire prioritization, and integration with unmanned systems. The ability to network seamlessly with drones, robotic combat vehicles, and advanced command and control systems may ultimately prove more decisive than any single improvement in armor or firepower. Perhaps the most revolutionary design change is the move toward hybrid electric propulsion. This feature offers multiple advantages, reduced fuel consumption, extended operational range, and a lower electromagnetic signature that decreases vulnerability to advanced detection systems. Logistics have always been the Achilles heel of armored formations, with fuel convoys serving as both a burden and a target. A hybrid Abrams would not only ease this logistical strain but also align with broader Department of Defense climate and energy strategies. It represents a rare case where environmental policy and battlefield necessity converge, each reinforcing the rationale for technological change. While much of the design inspiration comes from the Abrams X technology demonstrator revealed by General Dynamics Land Systems in 2022, the Army is careful to distinguish between experimental concepts and operationally viable solutions. Abrams X showcased features like a hybrid electric diesel engine, reduced crew, unmanned turret, 
and integration with unmanned aerial vehicles. Not all of these will directly transition into the M1E3, but the demonstrator confirmed that the engineering hurdles could be overcome. The Army has already invested $150 million into an engineering development program with GDLS, focusing on reducing weight and space demands, improving survivability, and building a truly modular system. If successful, the program will provide a foundation not just for the Abrams but for a family of next-generation combat vehicles. The urgency of this effort is heightened by global competition. In Europe, Germany's KF-51 Panther with its 130mm gun and drone integration, France's Leclerc Evolution, and Britain's Challenger 3 all represent serious modernization efforts. South Korea's futuristic K-3 project, with hydrogen fuel cells and AI-driven capabilities, and China's development of lighter, drone-integrated tanks reflect a worldwide recognition that the next generation of armored vehicles will not resemble the heavy steel behemoths of the past. Even Russia, despite its industrial challenges, has attempted to leap ahead with the T-14 Armada's unmanned turret and advanced protection systems. To maintain parity with allies and overmatch against adversaries, the United States cannot afford to delay. Still, the path ahead for the M1E3 is fraught with challenges. Congressional oversight committees are already raising questions about the funding transition from SEPV3 upgrades to the new platform, the potential strain on the industrial base, and whether the Army will pursue a one-for-one -one replacement strategy or operate a mixed fleet for years. Smaller suppliers in the defense industrial chain may struggle with the shift, particularly given the specialized materials and production requirements for the new tank. There are also open questions about foreign military sales, which have long been a stabilizing factor for the Abrams program. Whether allies like Poland, Egypt, or Saudi Arabia will be offered the M1E3 remains undecided, but such sales could prove vital for sustaining long-term production. Despite these uncertainties, the strategic rationale is clear. The battlefield of the future will not be dominated by tanks alone but by a web of interconnected systems, drones, sensors, electronic warfare, and precision fires, all working together. The M1E3 is designed not as a standalone weapon but as a node in this broader ecosystem. Its reduced weight, enhanced mobility, and hybrid propulsion will allow it to maneuver in environments where heavier tanks would be constrained. Its active defenses and AI-driven systems will ensure it can survive in contested electromagnetic and drone-saturated battlefields. And its modular design will allow it to evolve ensuring relevance against threats that cannot yet be fully predicted. In many ways, the M1E3 embodies both continuity and transformation. It continues the legacy of the Abrams as the backbone of America's armored brigades, but it also marks a decisive break from the past by prioritizing adaptability over raw mass. If the Army can deliver on its accelerated timeline and successfully integrate cutting-edge technologies into a reliable platform, the M1E3 may stand as the defining armored vehicle of the mid-21st century. Yet if delays, technical setbacks, or cost overruns derail the effort, the program risks becoming another cautionary tale of overreach in military modernization. The coming years will be decisive. By embedding prototypes into operational units as early as 2026, the Army is taking a bold step to incorporate soldier feedback from the outset. This approach not only promises to refine the design but also reflects a cultural shift in acquisition philosophy, away from decades-long cycles toward agile, responsive development. Whether the M1E3 succeeds or falters will depend not only on engineering breakthroughs but also on the Army's ability to sustain industrial readiness, secure stable funding, and integrate this new capability into its evolving doctrine. What is certain is that the M1E3 represents far more than another tank upgrade, it is a deliberate attempt to redefine the role of armored forces in a rapidly changing world, where survivability, adaptability, 
and technological integration are the new currencies of battlefield power.